In this video, we are going to take a look at JUnit assumptions. Now, assumptions are different than assertions. An assertion is going to fail the test if the assertion fails, whereas an assumption, it's going to check a, an optional condition, as some type of condition that you want to check for, like if you're running in a specific environment, like on a CI server or something like that. And you might want to uh, run the test in that condition, or you may not want to run that. So you're going to set up an assumption and what it's going to do is treat the test like it's been ignored. And it throws a, an aborted exception. You can see here on the documentation, the mid-screen, uh, see also test aborted exception. So that's kind of what it's going to do underneath the covers. And it's going to say, I'm just going to abort this test. And it, it's a real handy way where you have some type of condition where you might have like test data that you need to set up. And if that data is not there, don't fail the test. Don't flag it as a failure. Just say, hey, it's not there and, and move on. It's something that you got to use it with a little bit of caution because you could be covering up errors. But the biggest use case of this is going to be running conditionally in different environments. That's probably where you're going to see it the most. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to switch over to IntelliJ and jump over there and take a look at it. So let's go ahead and create a, a new test method. And call that test assumption true. You can see there that it's flagged red and it's asking me to import that. So I'm going to go ahead and import that static method. We can do something like system dot get environment. And I could do something like this where I say guru runtime. And obviously that's going to return back false because I don't have an environment variable set to that. So let's go ahead and run that. see that it, it threw it out as a failure, but now you can see we get the exception stack, so we get that little failure there. Now, if I run the entire class, let's take a look at that. You can see that it runs pretty quick, and it, it does fail that. So let's also create a, another test method there, because I want you to see the difference. And I'm just going to change this to like so. And we'll just do a comparison of two strings. So we're going to test test this, and you can see another string. So we're going to test that condition. So I'm just changing the method there. So I say that the assumption is true. And now let's run all the tests again. And we'll see that new method get picked up in our condition here. So now you can see the test assumption is true. So this guy ran OK. This one failed. To, to run. So that's how, how that kind of works. So you can set this up. It doesn't need to be the first statement in there. You can actually get into a test to have multiple things that you're testing in a, in a test case, and you might get down to that and then decide to do, use that. So a lot of the examples you see are going to be doing like a, a runtime environment variable to see if you want to run that test. But you might actually want to be going into a database and seeing if that database is configured there or if there's like a user in that database. So a number of different things that you could be testing. It's an assumption. It doesn't necessarily fail the test. You can see here the tests are still passing, but now where my assumption failed, that test that test case is marked as ignored essentially. So something that uh, another tool in your toolbox that you can use when you're doing JUnit tests.